Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making a delicious blueberry coffee cake. So let's get started. First off, we're making an amazing streusel topping. In a medium bowl, I want one cup or 120 grams of all-purpose flour, quarter teaspoon of salt, three quarters of a cup or 165 grams of light brown sugar. I'm just going to give it a little sprinkle here. And a teaspoon of cinnamon. My scale is done. I need six tablespoons of softened butter right now. There's a few ways to make streusel topping. You can use melted butter or softened butter. All right, you can use some forks to break this up right now or your clean hands. It's kind of more fun that way. Mix it and mash it so all the butter is worked into the flour and sugar. And you're gonna have wonderful clumpy lumps of deliciousness that'll go right on top of your coffee cake at the very end. So I'm breaking up the butter now and you can see it's starting to form just little lumps, almost as though you're making pastry dough. If I take a big clump and squeeze my hand, it forms a big rock. And when you make this coffee cake, it's actually nice to have a play of like some of the powdery stuff and some big rocks. So I would squeeze a couple handfuls together and break it up into like larger pieces. Now it's time to wash your hands, preheat the oven to 350 and start the cake itself. Grab a nine by nine inch pan and give it just a touch of butter on the sides, just to glue some paper. For me, it's always gonna be parchment paper. Now let's make the batter. I need 300 grams or two and a half cups of all purpose flour, half a teaspoon of salt. I also want two and a half teaspoons of baking powder to leaven this up. Give that a whisk, set that aside. Now I need a bigger bowl and 10 tablespoons of softened butter. Now it's time for the sugar. I need one and a quarter cups or 250 grams. That's easy to remember. Everything is gonna get the most amazing lift with some lemon zest. Blueberries and lemon are a match made in heaven. I'm using my rasp today as a microplane. It's perfect for like clouds of fluffy cheese, grating nutmeg, and any kind of lemon or orange zest. Now my scale is done. We're gonna mix this up until it is light and fluffy. I'm using a hand mixer today, but a stand mixer will definitely work as well. And in the mixing process, the lemon zest is gonna get worked into the sugar and the butter really mashed up. It'll release its oils and be amazing. This gets mixed on high for about four minutes. It's gonna become light and fluffy. And if you don't wanna stand for four minutes, use your stand mixer. This step of creaming your butter and sugar is one of the most important things you can do. And if you don't mix your butter and sugar up enough, and the recipe says light and fluffy, but it's not light and fluffy, your cake's gonna be denser and just not nearly as delicious. This step beats a ton of air into the butter and the sugar. It's giving it structure, and that air will expand in the oven as it warms up and give you that amazing texture. Now we're gonna add the eggs in one at a time. No shells. Mix it up. You don't wanna make a mess and have like some parts that are just kind of gloopy and the other parts are too buttery. I'm using a hand mixer today and one of the nice things about that is you can just kind of rake the bowl as you mix. If you're using a stand mixer, that's not gonna happen. So you're definitely gonna scrape the bowl down at least twice. Mix that egg in along with one teaspoon of vanilla. Once you add your eggs in, you might notice the mixture starts to break. That means that instead of being like just a fluffy cloud of amazingness, you'll see some granules mixed through because we're adding a lot of liquid in. That broken texture is fine, but if your butter is the right temperature, with just a little bit more mixing, you'll end up with a wonderful cloud. And this is the perfect structure to fold your flour and milk into. Now we're gonna add our flour in three batches. Just add a third of it in. It does not have to be exact. If you dumped the flour in and you mixed the milk in, you'd probably end up over mixing cake. And if you over mix cake batter, you're gonna activate the gluten. It's gonna be kind of gummy and dense. I have two thirds of a cup of milk in here. I'm adding half in. Okay, now we're gonna add in another third of the flour. And I'm mixing on low right now. The remaining milk, just fold it together to get any remaining streaks of flour out. Now I'm adding the star in two cups of blueberries. I'm using some fresh blueberries I got at the farmer's market today. These are amazing. I even have blueberry bushes in my garden now and I'm so excited for freshly picked blueberries, but I just didn't have enough for this recipe. If you're using frozen blueberries, that's totally fine too. Just throw them in frozen, do not thaw them. Now we're going to add these into our batter. 
So fold them together. You don't want anyone to have a giant clump of blueberries and someone to have none at all. Transfer the batter into your prepared nine inch baking dish. And of course, we're gonna level the batter out. You always wanna give your batter the best chance possible of having an even bake. And also we're creating a nice level base for our crumble topping. So many blueberries, it looks good. Now it's time for our beautiful streusel topping. Just sprinkle that over so we have a nice, even, amazing layer of brown sugar, butter, a little bit of cinnamon and salt. This goes into the oven for about an hour. It's done when a skewer inserted in the middle comes out clean. Start checking it around 55 minutes. In you go. Once cool, slide this right out of the pan. Look at how soft this side is. Oh my gosh, chock full of blueberries, pillowy soft on the bottom with a crunchy top. That is delightful. The zing of the blueberries and the lemon, the cinnamon and brown sugar on top. It's crunchy, melt in your mouth. It has everything. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe. And if you like this video, check out my breakfast treat playlist.